Hey guys, my name is Kevin Alvarado. And I'm Nico Deer, and we're with Source Graphics. Today, we're here to talk about the Artec Leo. Uh, I have Kevin here with me, who's been an expert in the 3D scanning field for over two years now. And Kevin, could you explain a little bit more about the Artec Leo, some of its uh, features, and what sets it apart from other 3D scanners that's on the market? Yeah, I mean, the first thing you notice is it's fully portable. So no wires or anything, uh, no power cables, uh, no connections to a computer. Uh, when you're scanning, everything gets internally stored on the device. Um, you're actually able to see all the different projects um, that we have internally stored here. You got up to 500 gigabytes. So you, right now I'm looking at 160 projects that we currently have on here. So um, you're able to go out into the field all day and scan, and not really worry about carrying a laptop or a power source with you. That's super convenient for those customers that are always on the go, especially if they're traveling by air or car, you know, you don't have to worry about having power cords and everything set up. So that's awesome. Absolutely. Um, could you tell me a little bit more about like its industrial usage? Like which industries would this best be applicable for? Yeah, I mean, the, the number of industries that are adopting it are, are pretty insane. Uh, we're manufacturing, first and foremost, uh, mm -hmm. is using it, um, especially when they're doing quality control or some reverse engineering um, type of applications. We have a lot of uh, automotive industry uh, that use it. Um, you know, it's being used in art and cultural uh, preservation, uh, you know, World Heritage sites. Um, Especially uh, an interesting one is now a crime scene investigation and being really? used in forensics and uh, you know analysis of you know different situations. So uh, you know, for example, like your local police department would be able to use this and scan a crime scene in order to capture all that data and information. Exactly, exactly. You know, uh, doing different crime scenes, crash scenes. Um, it's actually right now being utilized in, in Ukraine. Um, Artec has actually provided the police force over there with. Wow. a number of 3D scanners to document. That's amazing, awesome. So I mean, it seems like the Leo has lots of different use cases for it, which is amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a, it's a heck of a machine. Um, you know, it, it captures up to a point accuracy of 0.1 millimeters. So we're looking at 100 microns. It's only like, what is it, four thousandths of an inch? Yeah. Um, so you're pretty accurate. And you're scanning things that are ranging from, you know, size of a basketball, about a, a foot cubed, all the way up to a 10 feet cube so we can be scanning full cars whole boats um you know sections of aircraft or even a whole aircraft okay um, yeah does it have any like you know every sort of equipment these days has some sort of limitations is there something that the leo just maybe has a little difficulty with or what areas does it excel with you know could you give me a little bit of the pros and cons um well it's you know, it, it actually utilizes uh, two different types of, of light. So it uses uh, blue laser light as well as structured white light. So it actually does a really good job in, in a number of uh, situations. You know, if we're going outside and scanning in full sun, it's actually able to, to capture when a lot of other scanners fall short. Okay. Um, you know, but it, it's similar to other 3D scanners. When we actually work with light, we're working with the laws of physics. So things that are really shiny and black or things that are transparent or chrome, obviously are gonna have some issues with the, with the scanning. Of course, of course, yeah. So overall, it sounded like this scanner is definitely one of the hot ones on the market right now, you'd say? I will definitely say uh, it's being adopted everywhere. Uh, and it's making a name for itself for sure. Awesome. Have you, um, you know, what's some interesting projects you've done with the Leo, you'd say? Um, you, some of the more fun ones are um, definitely working with the movie industry, uh, capturing, you know, people, um, you know, going on set and, um, you know, capturing uh, full characters like uh, suits and getups and like everything. CGI. Yeah, basically, you know, capturing okay. capturing full uh, people in wardrobe to be able to get them into a virtual space and create CGI uh, um, animations. And, um, you know, we, we actually recently did some work with a, a video game company to scan horses. You don't say. Yep. Yep. That's, it's that's uh, very... it's pre pretty wild. Pretty wild. You know, it's tough to keep them uh, still, but we, we managed to do a pretty good job at it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, you know, since I have you here today, I'd love for you to you know show me a little bit about this scanner. Would you mind maybe giving me a quick demonstration? 100%. I was waiting for you to ask me. Awesome. All right, guys. So here, uh, Kevin's going to demonstrate for us a quick demo of the Artec Leo. And so it looks like today we're scanning a, what is this, Kevin? Is this a clay pillar? Uh, it's actually, it's a yeah, plaster pillar. Okay. Um, you know, I felt like it, uh, it represents a good amount of fine detail as well as a fairly large part. You can imagine this being something like a, a cart dashboard you know, or a manufactured part that you need to scan for either you know, quick quality analysis or for something you're going to reverse engineer. Um, or maybe this is a, you know, old mine Stila that you're trying to, you know, scan and preserve the, the form of it. Of course, you know? of course. I mean, this 
Scanner has lots of different applications. Capturing artifacts, prototyping, and reverse engineering are just a few of them. So exactly. Um, yeah, I'd love to see how this scanner works. Perfect. So I'm just going to go and hit new project. As you can see, it's going to start flashing. Um, this is basically to, it's going to take lots of pictures at the same time building this object. Um, it's also going to be taking uh, pictures of the object to uh, represent all the texture that it has. So we're going to get color information back from the scanner. If I go a little bit closer, it'll actually tell me that I'm too close to the object. If I go further away, it'll tell me that I'm too far. It has a fixed focal distance, so we want to stay at around, you know, a foot and a half to two feet from the object. If I get too close, I'm going to end up seeing kind of an orangish red tint. If I get too far, I'm going to see a bluish tint. So I'm going to, green is good. I'm going to go ahead and click the trigger and start building my object. So all I'm going to be doing is just painting over my object. And I'm trying to cover areas that I previously scanned. Now I can get some different angles. I can even flip it upside down to get some weird crevices. But I'm essentially just working around building the object. And if you notice, there's no tracking points on the object. This is because Artec uses both color and geometry to track their, their scans. Once we have our scan, you'll be able to rotate around. As you can see, we're basically looking at a 3D object in space. Very cool. And so this yeah. is convenient for customers that are going to be you know, on the road. They don't have a laptop with them, but they can see the object getting scanned in real time. Exactly. Um, but if you notice, we don't have the bottom of the object it's on the floor. Would you mind flipping over the pillar for me? Of course. What I'm basically going to do is not worry about its positioning or anything. We're just going to get another scan. Okay. We're going to add this information to the previous information. So that way we have one big object Perfect. and no floor, no excess information on the outside. So I'm going to start it up again. Get right to my green zone. Go ahead and click scan and just start scanning again. And so just to ask a quick question, you know, because we're combining two different orientations of this object. So our tech is actually able to take two different sides of an object and merge them together. Yep. It's basically going to look at different reference points on the object, uh, whether that's based on geometry or color. And it's going to match them up so that we have one object. Uh, you know, it'll give you some ability to delete out excess information, you know, to actually get them fine tuned and really, you know, together. But we should end up with an object that's within 0.1 millimeters of point accuracy. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, as you can see, we have our second scan. And so this is all on its four inch touch screen that is embedded in the device. Yep. And actually the screen will pop out too, oh. just in case you need to reach really high over your objects and be able to scan something. Very you know, a little overhead. Okay, perfect. perfect. Yeah. But awesome. I think the next part is really just getting this into the computer so that we can post-process it and actually get our usable STLs or OBJ models. Perfect. So we'll move on over to the software. Yeah. Perfect. Well, now you can see we're in our tech studio. Uh, you're able to kind of pan around your objects and be able to look at things. And you can see the, the pillar that we scan both sides. Okay, yeah, so it looks like there's a little bit of information there at the bottom, and that's going to be the floorboard of where we scan. Correct, correct. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm actually going to go into uh, my eraser tool, and I'm going to kind of get rid of some of that excess information. Uh, if you notice, I may have scanned the wall on, on the side behind us, so I had to get that portion out first with my lasso tool. But I'm using the base selection tool now, which is, it's kind of like an AI tool, where it's going to uh, realize everything that's on that plane, and anything that's perpendicular to it, it's not going to highlight. Okay, so this is very convenient for, you know, deleting information that's completely irrelevant to your objects. So you don't have to go through and splice and decide which areas is going to be uh, included or not. The AI actually does it for you. Exactly. Um, you know, instead of going down there and, you know, fine tuning with that little lasso selection, uh, we can just use the tools within the Arctic Studio uh, to kind of get this done and, and get it done quick. Perfect. Now, um, when you look at the screen over there, is that information on the right hand side? So that's all of our frames and different scans? Uh, correct. Um, as you noticed, um, I was turning on and off each scan. Uh, so we have the first scan and uh, video scan two. Um, and in the first one, we have 205 frames. The second one is going to be 248. Um, if you can see now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take all of our scans. So. Uh, Leo scan one, Leo scan two, and I'm going to try to get them to be uh, 
you know, lined up together uh, instead of just floating around aimlessly by themselves in space. And this is the Artec alignment process? Correct. Um, I'm basically just choosing points on the objects that are going to be similar to each other. Um, you really only need three points. Um, I chose four just to make sure that we're getting a really good and accurate result. And then the system actually uses even more AI to kind of auto-correct little tiny corners and glitches to make sure it's the most accurate. Exactly. It's going to do a little fine-tuning uh, and get you, get you moving where you need to be. Oh, look at that. And so now after you've deleted information and you aligned your two scans, what would be that next step? So now we're actually going to do a registration. So instead of just aligning the two scans themselves, we're going to go through and we're going to have every single one of those frames align each other. So we're going to have the total of 453 frames, fine tuning and becoming a little more tight knit. And you'll, what you'll see is that instead of a fuzzy uh, surface right now, you're seeing uh, each one of those lines is a, uh, a surface that is perpendicular to your view. You're going to see those tighten up a little bit, get a, get a little more fine detail as you will. And so right now we're trying to remove that ghosting effect. And so that's why we saw the x-ray mode. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I'm basically going to run over to Fusion now. Uh, this uh, You can actually slide uh, the sharpness up and down for a more smooth or more um, pronounced effect. We can change our uh, max or our 3D resolution. Uh, right now I have it set at 0.5. Um, it's a good you know, even point, but it goes from 0.1 up to 1. Um, and this is going to uh, really just show the, the fine features or kind of gloss over depending on uh, how accurate you want the model. Okay. Are um, most of these settings kind of like preset like for each scanner or is this something that you have to adjust each time? Yeah, each scanner is going to have their own uh, set default uh, parameters, but y you can change them up and down. Um, I, I recommend always just start with the default parameters. It'll usually get you a very useful result. Awesome. All right. And so now that we have that fusion model completed, um, what's some things that we can do with this fully fused 3D model? Is it, um, are we able to measure it? Are we able to, you know, fill in holes? What's some other features Artec has? Yeah, so, um, I mean, right now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you some of the hole filling features. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate my object to where I can see, uh, you know, there's obviously some holes. You're able to see the, the coal on the backside. And this uh, feature right here, the fixed holes tool, is actually going to outline every single hole that's on your model. So you can see the list off to the left, you can see just a number of holes, but if I click on one and another, it'll locate those scans for me or those holes for me. I'm gonna choose smooth instead of flat. I want it to kind of follow the curvature of the surface um, and try to you know, add information the best it can in a smart way. Um, but I just click fill holes and it'll go ahead there. So let me just fill in a couple other ones just to kind of show you that it'll do the best that it can to recreate the surface that was there. but. Always remember that if you have holes, you can just go back in, scan more information, and add it to the scan. You know, nothing supplements real scan data. Um, right now, we're basically just creating a surface that we think is there. If we actually want the surface, go back in, rescan it, add it. Uh, this right here is a, a uh, linear measurement tool. So we're basically just choosing points on the model. You know, as you were wondering, you can, you can take measurements straight in the software. You can save those measurements as well. Um, they do have, uh, you know, surface area and volume features as well. Um, we wouldn't be able to get the volume since it's not a watertight model. We still have some holes in it. Um, what I'm looking at right now is basically our, our text stream mode. Um, I'm actually most likely going to be running into an issue with our text stream mode, though, because we have too many polygons. Um, right now, if you can see off to the right hand side, we have 9.4 million polygons making this model. Damn, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a it's an insane amount. Um, you know what we want to do is we want to lower that the amount of polygons um, just so it's a, a usable model. If we took this into really any other software, we're looking at you know a gigabyte of information and it could possibly crash your your SolidWorks or uh, you know other CAD softwares or Blender or whatever you're going to be using. Mm -hmm. um, by s simplifying it by twenty five percent, in theory, we're going to lower that file size by 25%. So you're going to get a quarter of the size. It's going to be much easier to use in this software. It's going to be much easier to put texture and color information back on. And it's also going to be much easier for other softwares to open as well. And that's your mesh optimization tool. Correct. Correct. Awesome. So uh, if for, in the beginning it did an artifact healing, so it removed all the small objects as well as healed any bad polygons that may be um, you know, causing errors. And now it's just simply doing it.
mesh uh, decimation or a simplification. Um, as you can see, you know, um, right now we have the uh, it's bouncing back and forth between the 9.4 and the 2.3 million um, by lowering it by 25%, but we have much larger polygons where we're not really sacrificing too much of the um, surface resolution. Perfect. And then uh, in most cases, customers, you know, if they're reverse engineering or just need a grayscale model, you can leave it here. But it looks like, you know, let's say, for example, this customer, they want the full color back on this object. So you'd have to go into this texture mode and uh, complete that step. Exactly. And now that we have a lowered amount of polygons, it's going to be much easier for the, the system to paint onto the object. Of course, we can do it with a large amount of polygons if you really want high detail. But um, there's a fine balance between the size of the file you're working and the type or the quality of resolution that you might need. But you'll see here, um, it basically just jumps through and it uh, it colors up the model. Wow, okay, so you really see the different uh, settings. You can even adjust, so you've got saturation, hue, and so you can yeah, if you play wanna... around with it a little bit. Exactly, you know, if you have a desired result, if you want it to be black and white, or if you want it to be super poppy in color, you got little adjustments. Not a crazy amount there, just because it's, um, it, this software is not meant for much of the texture adjusting, but um, yeah, basically from here, we export into SDL, OBJ, ASC. You know, if you want color information, we'll go OBJ, but we have maybe 15 different formats that we're able to export into. So you can take it into CAD software, mesh editing software, whatever the case may be. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. We hope you learned a lot about these Artec 3D scanners. If you ever have questions, we're always here to help. Feel free to find us at sourcegraphics.com and we'll see you next time.